we go. Oh, yeah, it's Dr. John Bennett, a learning producer of these shows, and was very glad to see. I, I show, uh, show up, apparently had some kind of emergency, but we have um, a weekly neurosurgical uh, Super Sunday, uh, clinoidectomy, extradural, intradural. Uh, we have a good group of panelists today, Ipe, and uh, let's go around and inter uh, meet them before we start. Okay, let's start with um, uh, George. Could you please introduce yourself to Ipe? Okay, George Akwede Agobai, 50 year resident, University of Benin Teaching Hospital, Nigeria. Welcome, welcome. Okay, let me go to Dr. Kabulo. Yes, I am Kabulo from uh, Congo, I currently final year neurosurgery resident at the University of Zimbabwe. Uh, welcome. And okay, uh, Alam, could you please introduce yourself? Me, I am. Uh... I am Musa Denu. I am in third year of neurosurgery training in Rabat Center. Okay, welcome. Welcome. Okay, Marco. Hello, everybody. Hey, Marco. Uh, Marco Meloni uh, from Italy. Uh, I'm a consultant neurosurgeon. I am in the same center like. Okay. Okay, what's the question? Go ahead. I'm sorry, man. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm getting all confused. Daru, could you please introduce yourself? Hello, everybody. Yeah. Uh, I am Nuru uh, Bonkol. I um, come from Benin, but I, uh, I am now in my third years in uh, the definite Raba Center uh, in Morocco. I am the third year. My residency course training, like uh, Dr. Dino Musa. Okay. So welcome everybody and welcome to our famous uh, Professor Lipe Sherian. Thank you. Thank you very much, Stuart. Good morning, everybody. Yeah, we can hear you. <laughs> I'm Stuart Portilla from Ecuador, Cuenca, Ecuador. I'm young neurosurgeon. Welcome. Very, very good. And Remy, could you, uh, you know, you know, I. Yeah, hi, hi. I am a neurosurgeon, senior neurosurgeon uh, from Mauritania, so I know in France. I am now in France. Cool. Oh, well, very good. Welcome. Okay, uh, let's see who else have when we met here. Uh, Okay, uh, Nasheedan, hey. please introduce yourself. Yeah, hi, Mr. Uh, Professor Aip. Uh, nice to meet you again. I am Nasheedan, resident of neurosurgery, fourth year of training in Iraq, northern of Iraq. W welcome. We got a good turnout today, Aip. Okay, okay. Uh, did we meet everybody? Okay, we met everybody. Uh, uh, my Alam, name is Elam. I'm we from. Didn't meet you. Alam, we didn't meet you. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead, Alam. Hi, how are you, everybody? I'm uh, Elam, a neurosurgeon from Ethiopia, currently. Welcome, welcome. Okay, okay, I guess, uh, all yours. Okay. Uh, first of all, it's so good to see all of you. Uh, I, I have been a bit busy over the last uh, few days. Uh, it's been really difficult, but... Uh, uh, I thought I have got some videos uh, of uh, some patients we have done last week and yesterday, and uh, I I wanted to show you the difference and uh, the the whole point of clinoidectomy as well as how you do an intradural clinoidectomy, which is uh, sometimes not very straightforward when you have a giant aneurysm like I'm going to show you. And I'm going to show you an extradural clinoidectomy in a GH adenoma, in a huge uh, tumor, which where all the bones are so big. And in this particular case, we had the middle clinoid process, so which was complicating it. The middle clinoid process was there, so we couldn't pull out the clinoid. If we had the middle clinoid process, then if you try to pull out uh, the last bit of the clinoid, you can tear the carotid. So we are going to start showing you right right away. Uh, I need to share my screen, right? Yes. Yeah. Uh, let me see how I'm showing only, I'm seeing only the large, uh, small screen uh, 
John, I yeah. am not sure. Okay, when you click on the uh, share button, what comes up? Uh, no, I I have a problem because I am on the VLC, in, I'm in a Mac. Let me just see now. I've closed okay. everything. Yeah, we'll, we'll you work it out. Okay. Uh, I've got all the windows, everybody here. And now, okay, I, I, I don't think I can get into the main view. Uh, let me just see. Okay, uh, I've got it. Okay, got it? I got it. Okay. I got it. I got it. I'm going to share, guys. Yes, can you share. see? Yes, 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 we can see it. We can see it. Okay, yes. so uh, the first video that I am going to show is a video that we uh, did for an extradural uh, clinoidectomy for a large uh, uh, pituitary adenoma, which was hard. So um, I will I will start off with this right now. Can you see? Yes, we can see. Yeah. Okay. You're picking a file. Okay. Uh, sorry, I don't want to open it in QuickTime. I want to open it in VLC. Um, so this video I just got. Uh, Yeah, okay, can first. you see this now? Yes, very good. Yes. Okay, uh, yeah, everybody. So if you can see this, what I'm going to, what I'm doing right now, this is the frontal lobe. Everybody can see that? Yes. 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 That, is a, that is a temporal lobe. That is a temporal lobe. And this is the orbit which has been thinned considerably. The orbit was very huge with a huge uh, frontal sinus and everything. So we, the frontal sinus was towards here and it was spreading all out here. So we drilled out completely. What is that drilling out called? Anybody? What unlocking? Anybody? Sagittal unlocking. Yeah, that is called the sagittal unlocking. So yeah. this is the sagittal mm -hmm. plane. So this is, we have drilled out all this part that is called the sagittal unlocking. Now we are taking off the lateral most part of the clinoid process or uh, just the sphenoid wing medial to it till we see the orbitomeningeal band. Can you see the orbitomeningeal band starting to develop there? Yes. There? Yes. 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 You have the frontal lobe, you have the temporal lobe, you have the orbitomeningeal band. Anybody who's going to do cystinostomy, please not. This is the same anatomy that you're going to do. This is the same thing that you're going to do. Okay? So now we are taking off a bit of lateral um, lateral part of it. Because this clinoid is so thick, you will see that, how difficult it is to remove it. So we are taking it out so much so that. Um, now, now can you see what is that? What is that? Or what is this man? Yes, and what is this bone, anybody? Below the orbitomeningeal band, this bone is the lateral margin of a fissure. What is that fissure? Anybody? Can you come again, okay. please? The question. Yes. So this is frontal lobe. This is temporal lobe. This is orbitomeningeal band. And there is a bone which is lateral to a certain fissure. What fissure is that? Orbital fissure, superior. superior orbital fissure, exactly. Superior yeah. orbital fissure, orbital that is fissure. what you are. Yes, yeah. a superior orbital fissure. Very good. So yeah. we are, we are, we are going to cut that. So when you cut, the cavernous sinus is going to protrude, and there is going to be some ooze, but that's okay. We are cutting with a diamond knife. And as we cut, as we cut, can you see the clinoid process getting clearer? Yes. Can you see? Yes, yes, yes. Now yes. we are cutting, cutting there, slowly cutting with a diamond knife, we're cutting over the, and I'm going to dissect, dissect the superior orbital fissure every, I don't need to do much dissection, I don't need to do much axial unlocking here. 
but I need to take out the Kleinert process. So I will need to, I will need only whatever is necessary. So there is always a bleeder in this part that is the orbitomeningeal artery and the orbitomeningeal vein. So once you take that, the bleeding will stop. So you're going into the next video. You can see? Yes. yes, we can. yes. Can you see the clinoid being uncovered slowly, slowly? Yes. 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 Right. So I'm cutting further with a diamond knife. The orbitomeningeal artery. Can you see the orbitomeningeal artery? Can you see the orbitomeningeal yes. artery? Yes. 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 So we are taking the orbitomeningeal artery also. This is under very high magnification. Usually we just peel it off and then there will be some bleeding. We just bipolar. But we are going into the real details now. So that diamond knife is so small. So we are taking it piece bit by bit and dissecting the cavernous sinus so carefully. All the while uncovering more and more clinoid process. It's a massive clinoid process. You can appreciate how big this clinoid process is. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, it is too big. Really, really big. Complexion. Yeah, so slowly going over the cavernous sinus, layer by layer. That is a superior orbital fissure. This is a superior <laughs> orbital fissure. Yeah. So I'm going layer by layer over that and slowly retracting the temporal dura away. Using the diamond knife, I'm... Uh... Can you see how I'm dissecting? Yes. Yes, yes. Yes, of course, yes. So, right, so let's go to the next video. So, now whatever clinoid that I can take with a with a punch, I am taking because that is empty bone, and then whatever I cannot, I will take with a drill. So again, I am exposing clinoid more and more. You know, the lateral margin of orbitomeningeal bat, entire lateral margin can be cut till you see in faint outline the third nerve. Okay. When you see the third node, that is when you stop. Because if you cut further, then you will cut the third node. You don't want to do that. Okay? So we are cutting from lateral to medial. You can cut all the way to the true cavernous membrane. You can see the true cavernous membrane there. One second. Now we have finished the third. Now we are all going on to the fourth. Okay? I'm sorry I didn't arrange this. I just didn't have the time to. I'm sorry. Uh, okay, so now can you can you see the clinoid process being arranged? I mean, uh, you know, you are seeing it more and more and more. Now we are starting to drill. Can you see? Yes, we can. Yes, yes, yes. Right. So we are using a sleeved long drill. And the bone, believe me, I have never seen a clinoid like this. It is like ivory, solid carotid bone. But you must also understand this carotid is right over the, I mean, this uh, clivus, I mean, this uh, clinoid is right over the carotid. So I have to be very careful. I have to get the feel of this bone. And I should not be, my hand cannot be tired. Because if my hand is tired, then I, ha I can have many mistakes. So I am drilling over the superficial aspect of the clinoid. Thank you.
I'm going towards the optic nerve, coring the carotid out. See, I have broken the carotid where the lateral margin of optic nerve would be there. Okay, then laterally I would see the carotid. Okay, so it is uh, once I break that off, then I can go a little bit more medially. Then I can drill off. This is part of the carotid. This is part of the clinoid. So we are drilling it off further and further. Okay, let us. Let us run through it. Yeah, now we are mobilizing the carotid. Can you see? Yes. The optic nerve yes. and the carotico oculomotor membrane. Can you see the carotico oculomotor membrane, the black membrane? Yes. 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 So we are seeing that. So we are mobilizing all that. Uh, uh, so you can see the optic nerve. Can you see the optic nerve there? There where my arrow is. That is the optic nerve. This carotico oculomotor membrane is right over the carotid. So uh, I have mobilized even that part, but then there is a, I realized that it is going laterally. So there is a middle clinoid process. So the middle clinoid process, you should not uh, rip out. If you rip out, then you will have problems. Okay. So you can see this is the carotico oculomotor membrane. So it is black compared to the white of the optic nerve. Okay. If you are not careful here, you can create so much damage. So you dissect, dissect, dissect. Under very high magnification, you dissect, try to take it off. But then if you find it is going medially all the way down, then you know it is a middle clinoid process. Okay. Encerclage of the carotid. Okay. So we have gone so much laterally. We have exposed the entire oculo uh, carotid membrane and then even you are not finding it so you what you do is you try to get the carotid medially and try to take as much bone as possible so that you get more window but if it is mobilizing it's fine if it's not mobilizing just bite if uh, my bone cuser was working uh, i would have used the bone cuser but sometimes it's dangerous to use the bone cuser or the drill because uh, the heat itself can cause damage to the carotid. So you don't want to do that because it's, we are so close to the carotid, you know. So my dissector is protecting. See, everything is mobilized now. I could, I have the temptation to just pull it out. It's a small bit, but no. Okay, never do that. Uh, I have got into trouble. See, the whole thing is mobilizing now. Can you see that? Please, can you, can you, can you repeat that? I don't understand. Right, so most often the clinoid is only on top like that. But sometimes this clinoid also has a root laterally that will connect to the middle clinoid process. See, can you see laterally the clinoid bone going down? Yes, yes. So this is a root to the middle clinoid. This means that there is a ring of bone around the carotid. Okay. So in this case, a very, very rare situation. I will show you a normal extradural clinoidectomy after this. Then you will understand that it is a clinoidectomy is not so complex. But this I'm showing you a very difficult clinoidectomy, which we did just two days before. Okay. So oh, this is, yeah. So don't, don't worry. Clinoidectomy is uh, not usually this difficult. It's very, very simple. So I am going at very high magnification, biting, sub millimeters of bone by sub millimeters of bone with my clinoid punch without really pulling anything out so can you see the oculocarotic motor oculo i mean oculomotor carotid membrane here yes yes uh, it's very beautiful it's very beautiful to see you don't want to you don't you don't understand Yes, yes, I understand. Yes. Okay. Right, right. So now we will expose the carotid and
Oh, sorry. I am going into the dural opening there. So before that. It's completely unedited tumor. This is just how I did it. Huh? This is important to see because I edit it, I make it very beautiful, right? Unedited tumor is like life surgery. Huh? No beautification. Okay. Uh, well, it's, uh, it's more or less complete. You can see the space that I got. You can see the space that I got here. The sagittal unlocking, a little bit of axial unlocking is done. And I'm ready to attack this tumor, actually. Okay. So... Uh, uh, Professor Lippe, you perform a, a pterional approach in this case. Beg your pardon? It's a, it's a pure pterional approach. You can actually see okay. the tumor. Uh, one second. Oh, I hate this quick time player. You cannot even stop it. It's a... Oh, it's a terrible player, you know. It's... <laughs> Would you want to do what? No, I want to stop this quick time player, but. Uh, or stop it. It is, okay. not, it is not allowing me to. Apples, I don't know. I think I'll have to just wait for this. So, you have to understand that uh, once I do this unlocking, I am going to get increased space for my optic carotid window, the window between the carotid and the third nerve. And also, I can, you see this space, it's empty. This space, can you see this? Where the clinoid was, can you see this space? Where this yes. wheel, is, wheel is rotating? Can you see this? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. On top. There, it was where the extradurally there, it was where the carotid was. I mean, the clinoid was. So I have taken this entire thing. You can see the blood, uh, the blood outside the dura, which has stained it. So I, I have taken it off completely so that now if I open this, I am on the roof of the cavernous sinus. This tumor was going into the cavernous sinus. So I have done that. Let me just uh, uh, force quit it. Hmm. Uh, anybody knows how to do a, how to f uh, quit on a, ah, okay, thank God. Okay. Yeah, go to the map, I don't know. Okay, I can just like this, okay? Now, we start the other one, intradural. Okay, are you seeing intra? Are you seeing my videos now? Uh, we're, we're, we're seeing you pick them. Okay. Yes. Are you seeing it? Yes, it's fine. Yeah. fine. yeah, this is one where I I am doing a huge aneurysm, maybe maybe a couple of weeks back. So can you see what is this what is this structure? Can you tell me what is this structure that my arrow is on? This is frontal lobe, this is temporal lobe. Fissure of uh, Stephen Fisher? No, 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 no. This this structure between this is the orbitomeningeal band. Oh, okay. Okay, uh, this is the orbit. This is the orbit. Frontal yes. lobe, temporal, yeah. temporal lobe. Can you see? Yes, yes. This, this is frontal lobe. 
this is temporal lobe orbit orbitomeningeal band can you see the orbitomeningeal band yes yes and above that you can see start seeing the clinoid are you can you see this yes or no yes 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 fin band yes so now i am drilling the it is lateral most lateral most part of the superior orbital fissure can you see what i am i am drilling the superior orbital fissure yes 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 Yes. That's right. Orbital fissure. Yes. yes. Superior. Yes. This is left. This is left side. Left side. Okay. Left this side. is not the right side. Okay. These are all cases in the last few weeks. Last uh, maybe two weeks. So uh, maybe less than last two weeks. <laughs> so that is the superior orbital fissure. Can you see the superior orbital orbit? Superior orbital fissure. Yes. Yes. The orbitomeningeal band, the anterior clinoid. Can you see this? Yes. 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 It's very clear. It's, uh, nothing. So I am going to cut. I'm going to dissect in this plane. You dissect just the arachnoid plane. Ah? Huh? No. The yeah, arachnoid plane. This is the true cavernous, the pericavernous, pericavernous membrane. I am, uh, I am dissecting the pericavernous uh, membrane. I'm, I'm just reaching the pericavernous membrane by cutting the orbitomeningeal oh. band. Okay. Okay. Now I am drilling the lateral most portion of the um, clinoid process because you will see that there is a huge aneurysm in the medial part of the clinoid process. So I have to do an intradural drilling there. Okay, I can. I am opening the orbitomeningeal band and I am drilling off the lateral part of the clinoid process, but I am going to go intradural for the rest of my clinoid drilling. Now you can see this is the clinoid process. Okay, and once I don't want to reach the carotid because, see, I'm opening. Further, I'm opening further and exposing the clinoid process further. Can you see this? That is the clinoid process, okay? Yes, this is yes. Superior, superior orbital fissure. This is left side. I am exposing it further and further. But I know I cannot drill the entire clinoid process from extradural because uh, there is an, a large aneurysm. And uh, if it ruptures, then uh, it will be difficult. <laughs> uh, I will spend much more time. So here I am uh, drilling the uh, clinoid process, uh, thinning it out till the carotid, till the aneurysm. I'm literally drilling over the aneurysm now. Okay. Under very high magnification. Okay. So oh my god. Uh, Okay. No, not this. So. All right, so I'm going inside. Can you see this patient has ruptured her aneurysm? So I'm going inside and I'm opening the cisterns first. I have done partial clinoidectomy. Can you see the aneurysm starting to be visualized? Yes, yes. It's a giant aneurysm, okay? Yes, yes. So we are putting in our patties. I'm opening the proximal sylvian fissure. Okay, okay. There is a little bit of a bleeder there.
proximal sylvian fissure is being opened. lot of vessels there so i am sparing each and every vessel and trying to open further and further not the most friendly sylvian i'm taking one of those veins away you must at some time at some point you must make this decision you have about a lot of see now with that after i take that vein i'm able to mobilize nicely nicely down before before taking that vein i was not able to going at very high zoom and uh, dissecting further Can you see the aneurysm? Can you see yes, the aneurysm, yes. everybody? This is the aneurysm, okay? So I am dissecting the sylvian above the aneurysm there. It's giant, giant aneurysm. It's giant, it is a four centimeter aneurysm, okay? Wow. So I am I'm slowly dissecting the arachnoid right over the aneurysm, hooking it up and cutting it. Very important to dissect this aneurysm properly. If you don't dissect, then you cannot clip. This kind of giant aneurysms, it is exposure is most important. It's like a woman, okay? So you don't expose your heart to her. No, you you do not stand any chance to clip. Can you see how I am dissecting down? But the most important thing here is not this aneurysm, yes. it is the clinum. Yes. Yes. So can you see the lig, this is the aneurysm, and this is the falciform ligament and the proximal ring, okay? So the whole carotid is aneurysmal, can you see that? Yes. Yes. Exposing further. Exposing further. Huh. So you can see how, okay. So we have to find the margin of the optic nerve now. There is arachnoid here. Ah, okay. right. So I am exposing further. Again, you need to be very patient. Eh? Don't uh, don't try to do everything at one go. Huh? Is a uh, so you know that this much part of the this part of the clinoid is taken out, but this part of the clinoid I cannot take it out. So I am going to cut the dura over the clinoid, feeling for the bone. If I don't have bone, I am on the cavernous carotid. You must understand. So I am cutting the dura there. I want you to see all the steps. Is a uh, not just edited window, okay? So I am taking out the dura there. See, this lateral part of the clinoid is gone. This is gone. So I'm going to take the medial part of the clinoid, little bit uh, of bone above the optic nerve, so that I decompress everything. 
cut the proximal and the distal dural ring. You must understand this is the distal dural ring and the proximal dural ring is nothing but an extension of falciform over the carotid, okay? So, lateral clinoid is gone, so I'm using my diamond knife to cut the dura away. And then I will drill. I will drill away the Uh, okay, let us see. So I'm taking off that dura. I'm holding that dura and I cannot pull it because it is attached to the dural ring, right? If I pull it off, then I can cut it, right? So I have to do sharp dissection. I'm holding that dura right over the aneurysm. Under tension. I'm cutting it off. Very important that you have continuous irrigation here. You see how you are able to dissect that away, that dura, so that you get more and more exposure. This part is over the cavernous sinus. Okay, the tend is attached there. You can shave the tend also sometimes so that you get more lateral exposure. You must be very careful about the third nerve here. It's an important part of your Dolling's approach. This is a hybrid. So where you are doing a... Now I'm going to drill over the carotid. I mean, drill right over the carotid and the aneurysm on the... This is an intradural clinoidectomy where I have removed the... After dura. Dura. Ah, yeah, in, I mean, I have removed the dura over the clinoid and over the aneurysm, I'm going to drill. Okay. okay. So the medial part of the clinoid and above the optic nerve, I'm going to drill now, okay? This dura is protecting me. I have uh, I have taken, I have cut the dura in this limit. Can you see that? There is dura between me and the carotid there. Can you see? This dura. Everybody can see? Yes. yes. This dura is between me and the aneurysm. So, uh, even if I touch that dura with a diamond, the aneurysm will not rupture, okay? So that dura, I cannot take it off. If I take it off, then it's dangerous. So you have to keep that dura to protect your ass. I mean, sorry, the aneurysm. Huh? <laughs> yeah. So, right. Right, so let us uh, further keeping on taking this Clinoid. You see the aneurysm is getting more and more exposed. Now we don't have any proximal control. If this aneurysm ruptures, I have to go under cardiac arrest and see what, what I can do, okay? But, uh, or we have neck control. So we have to start the neck control going on, okay? Always in these aneurysms, how much ever good you are, whether you are uh, Dolinch himself or maybe uh, unless you are, uh, your name is not Jesus Christ, please get neck control, okay? Because uh, okay. in this kind of cases, uh, only God can uh, save you if, you if this aneurysm ruptures. It can rupture. Don't uh, think that it cannot rupture. I have seen this happening to many people. Uh, so I have made the wisest people who are those who learn from others' mistakes. You see, I have seen it happen, and I make it a point that I get neck control. It takes only five minutes, you know. 
you can be brave but not a fool huh? so always get a neck control we always get neck control here so to drill over this aneurysm it requires uh, is not easy on your heart you know we are brave but uh, it's not easy believe me it's not easy so we are exposing this aneurysm more and more and more now you can see the dura over that aneurysm i this is the proximal dural distal dural ring coming up okay so it is nothing but an extension of the falciform ligament which is falciform ligament is nothing but the dura over the optic nerve okay so uh, you don't have to glorify it by giving some fancy name and all that is dura over the optic nerve now further going further remember when you have we are going to take the clinoid the last part of clinoid there will be bleeding okay because you are on the roof of the cavernous sinus okay so you will have some bleeding there is bone bleeding you can always control it with some uh, well directed uh, bone bone uh, wax and then you irrigate it will be okay don't hurry okay you must understand you saw in my surgery half of the time i am irrigating okay in fact my my assistants will say i do surgery under water okay, i like doing under water everywhere what <laughs> i like it. really helps because uh, no heating for the surgeon no heating on the clinoid or the carotid huh because the surgeon also heats up after some time so during that time you need water okay so you see now beautifully that dura is seen gives the surgeon a very good you can you can feel how thin that bone is now all that bone is being taken away now you can see the normal carotid okay the normal carotid is starting to be seen you have opened the proximal sylvian you have got now some proximal control again further you are drilling over the optic now so you going to to proximal uh, uh, from proximal to distal yes i am exposing the aneurysm from proximal where it is in the carotid cave oh okay. starting from the carotid cave to the distal where it is uh, just next to the bifurcation Thank it's you. a long, okay. Okay, okay. it's long fusiform aneurysm where I, which I have to reconstruct. Okay, okay. Thank you. Right. So we we are doing this now. So what I wanted to show you was intradural uh, clinoidectomy. so this is intradural clinoidectomy i have shown you uh, two very difficult cases okay so now yeah. i am cutting what am i what am i cutting now what am i cutting um what is that dural band meninge uh, obito meningeal band oh, <laughs> no 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 that is not the obito meningeal band that was cut long time back that is the distal dural ring that is see this is the carotid this uh -huh. is the carotid so lateral to the carotid okay just around the carotid this is the optic nerve the optic nerve dura is continuing like that so what i am cutting is the distal dural ring okay okay distal dural okay. distal dural ring can you see the aneurysm more and more clearly now yes 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 it is yes i know once you cut the distal and the proximal dural ring you will be in the cavernous sinus the carotid 
C3 carotid will start in the cavernous sinus. So you can uh, see that also. Now I am exposing, I have, I have done intradural clinoidectomy. And now we can see now the brain is lax. So now I open this arachnoid. I can see the entire aneurysm. You can see the optic further, furthermore, some more little bit of. Can you see the optic now? Can you see the optic now? This bone I have to take a little bit more. Can you see the optic now there? The margin of the optic now? Not, not clearly. Ah, okay. It's not clear. It's not clear. Uh, I agree. It's not clear. I'll show you. Now, can you see the margin of the optic now? That white thing? Yes. Yeah. Right. Yes, now we have done the anterior clinoidectomy intradurally. or the bone drilling. So, for the more bone drilling so that the clinoid is completely, completely taken off, okay? You have to use a very small drill there. At this point, your hands are tired because you've been drilling for a long time. So you must take rest, okay? One small moment of indiscretion will cost you the patient. So, see, there is a little bit more bone. That is the roof of the cavernous sinus. That is the roof of the cavernous sinus. Can you see? That is the yeah, roof of the yeah, cavernous yeah, sinus. Yeah, okay. yeah. Please, sir, can you show us the true cavernous membrane? What do you want to see? Can you please show us the true cavernous membrane? The true cavernous membrane cannot be seen from the intradural approach. It will be seen only from the extradural approach. So I will make uh, this more clearer to you. Maybe one more lecture. I can see the true cavernous membrane is between the temporal lobe and the cavernous sinus, which is only seen in an extradural cavernous approach. This is an intradural cavernous approach. That was the first one which I showed you was the Dollings approach, which is extradural. This is intradural. So here, uh, like only the cavernous membrane can be seen. Are you understanding me? Yes. Yes, thank you very much. Yes. So the aneurysm is more and more clearly seen now. I am cutting the rest of the distal dural ring as well as the proximal dural ring. I'm hooking it up away from the aneurysm because I don't want the aneurysm to be stuck to that. Then I'm cutting it just right above the aneurysm. This is part of the clinoidectomy. If you do a clinoidectomy and you cannot cut the distal dural ring, no point. Okay, so you have to hook this distal dural ring, then cut, cut it off from the carotid. And there will be some bleeding. Last bit of bone, you can take it out like this, bite it out like this, without actually biting the dural ring. So make it more and more clearer. So you see an intradural clinoidectomy, right? 
Yes, yes. Yes. Yeah. Uh, again, this intradural clinoidectomy is complicated by the fact that I have an aneurysm right next to it. So it's not very comfortable doing this intradural clinoidectomy. But you have to stop thinking about this uh, uh, intradural. It is like, you know, uh, don't tell this to anybody, but it's like uh, chatting with your friend. I mean, chatting with your friend. All right, so we are, okay, so intradural clinoidectomy is being complete. Can you see the whole clinoid is taken out? Can you see? That is a carotid cave. Yes, yes? it's very. Yes. Little bit more of bone there. Little bit more of bone. I'm drilling it there, okay? So you need to be very persistent and need to be very careful. These are not easy surgeries, huh? Yes, I agree. Yeah. <laughs> so now that clinoid is completely mobile, you can see how thin it is. If you try to pull it out, even intradurally, if you try to pull it out, you can go and rupture this aneurysm. So you have to give it chance and you have to be very careful, focus and drill it away. Thin it off completely. I'm doing a roof drilling there. Thinning it completely. Mobilizing this. And you have cavernous sinus, you have the aneurysm there. Right, so now we go to the next one. And now I'm mobilizing the intra. Can you see the carotid cavernous? I mean the clinoid being mobilized there? No. No, I think that you are so high magnification that we don't see correctly what you show. Can, can you see this one? That no. is the last bit, last bit of the clinoid. Okay. Can you see? Okay, yes. 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 Now it's okay. that, yeah, that is the clinoid. That is being mobilized and taken out. Okay? Can you okay. see? Now? Yeah. Yeah. See the clinoid last bit out. Okay? Okay. 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 Huh. So at this point, I want you to clap for me because it was very difficult. Huh? <laughs> yes, of course. You deserve it. You deserve it. <laughs> so now I'm going to mobilize the rest of the dura. And furthermore, some more bone so that there is bleeding from that part because uh, there is cavernous sinus. So you just uh, pack some bone wax and cervical. So now, you see how you can mobilize that dura away from the carotid nicely? Yes. You are dissecting the dura from the aneurysm and the carotid. This is going into the carotid cave. So I'm dissecting the dura away from that. Again, no hurry, nothing. So you can put some surgery cell and some bone wax. This is a good combination for stopping the bleeding. Okay, put some surgery cell and on top of it some bone wax. 
Yes. So this is where yes. it was I stopping. Sometimes. Yeah, bony bleeding around the cavernous sinus, very good. Okay, better than flow seed. Much better than flow seed. Okay, surgery cell and bone mix. So small tricks for the skull based surgeon. Okay, you can publish it under the name of uh, small tricks for the skull based surgeon. Further, you are exposing further, further, further. Now, I think uh, some other case perhaps. Yes, so we are exposing the aneurysm now, distal. Okay. Yes, I see. So, of course, after the clinoidectomy, we are exposing the carot carotid distally. So, we what we did is we put a clip here and then we put two right angle clips there. But maybe this I can uh, show it to you on one of the next sessions. I can show you not only this, some more of uh, Jain aneurysms. Uh, yes. So, yeah, so I am going on and exposing this carotid further distally. I approximately, I, I exposed it completely. Okay, now I am going to expose it distally. Okay, now it's clippable. All right, now it's clippable. Earlier it was not. So I tried to test the aneurysm by giving it some pressure. How is it? And see how the branches are. There is a weak area here. This area can rupture. Okay, you are seeing the bifurcation. Okay, I am stopping, stopping to share. Um, okay, guys. Now, our intradural and extradural uh, clinoidectomies, I have shown you. Maybe I can show you a short video on the extradural clinoidectomy and the dissection again. I have shown this many times. Do you want me to show one more, one more time or uh, uh, can we be, can we yes, shut you can. shop today? Yeah, it's better. Yeah. You want me to show? Yeah, yes, that's yeah, you don't mind, it's better. Yes. Okay, so I have it here. Ah, thank God, the quick time players shut down. I mean, let me, okay. Ah, can you see this? This is, again, you have the orbit. That is, what am I cutting? What am I cutting? Orbitomeningeal band. Ah, exactly. Now you guys are all experts. You guys are all experts now. Okay, very good, excellent. I'm putting a stitch. And this is another aneurysm. So, see I'm drilling the, what am I drilling now? What am I drilling? That's the client, the, the client. Okay. Yeah, that's the client. So, I have opened this window. Yeah, this I'm doing the clino, extra dural clinoidectomy. Okay, extra dural clinoidectomy. Right. So I am drilling the clinoid further and further. What is this? That I, what is this? What is this part? Any idea? 
what is this? Is a superior orbital fissure? Okay, this is a cavernous sinus over the superior orbital fissure that I'm yeah. dissecting. Can you see? That is a superior orbital fissure. That's a cavernous sinus. Okay. Yeah. Here I'm because this aneurysm is basal tip. I am. Uh, I have to mobilize uh, further, much further. Axial unlocking. I have to do a lot more. Can you see? Can you see the cavernous sinus? Yes. Can you see the yes. cavernous sinus? Yeah, it's very clear. Okay. So that is a clinoid, frontal lobe, temporal lobe, cavernous sinus. Clear? Clear, very clear. Yes, yes. So that is 3, 4, and V1 is underneath this cavernous sinus. So I am taking the Taking, I'm peeling, okay. I'm peeling the temporal lobe of the cavernous sinus. Somebody asked me about the true cavernous membrane. This is the true yes. cavernous membrane. Can you see that? Yes, 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 yes. This is axial unlocking. I am taking the temporal lobe away from the cavernous sinus. Okay. So, so, can you see? Yes. Is that the, the, the pericavernous dissection? Yes, this is a pericavernous dissection. Classical pericavernous dissection. Okay? Okay. Yes. Not transcavernous. This is pericavernous. Pericavernous. Okay. Yeah. Now I have collaterally. Now, now I have opened a hole in the cavernous sinus. You can you see the bleeding? Mm -hmm. Yes. A bit. Yeah, so nothing much. I just put in a surgery cell there and that's it, finished. There is nothing much. As long as you are only opening small holes, it's okay. But if you are completely taking off pericavernous membrane, then it's a bit difficult. Then you have to inject a flow seal and uh, wait a long time and all that. So, that is surgery cell and uh, that is it. So that is, that is the entire cavernous sinus. Can you see the axial unlocking now? Temporal lobe, temporal lobe is taken this way laterally. Axial and un sagittal unlocking is done. Axial unlocking is done. Now I open the dura like that. I am here. I am in the interpedicular system. Okay. All right. Okay, guys. So, um, if there are any questions, I'll answer. And I need to go home. It's late. Uh, my parents uh, and my my brother has come down after eleven years. So. Um, I have to give them some time. <laughs> I huh? so I I I ask you to excuse me. If there is any doubts, I will answer you for sure. But uh, otherwise, I'll need to give them some time. Uh, please. Okay, we understand. I and thanks for taking the time. Now, Thank you. Uh, quickly, any questions or comments before I get going? Uh, just a fast question, uh, John. Uh, okay. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Please. In this case, uh, you perform the surgery a uh, carotid occlusion test. In this case, you need to, to cut the carotid for uh, bleeding from the aneurysm. I didn't get you. I didn't understand you. Uh, have you performed before the surgery a uh, carotid test occlusion in this case? Uh, uh, well, uh, you are talking about a BTO? Uh, uh, yeah, that's right. Balloon intestine. Right? Uh, well, no. Uh, see, one thing is we hardly, I mean, if the carotid is uh, ruptured, if the aneurysm is ruptured, for me, um, I close the carotid, but uh, I can get a per I mean, I know the structure of this aneurysm. I can clip it in less than five minutes. There is uh, no problem. I'm sure of this. Um, I really don't, because... Uh, in fact, if the if this aneurysm ruptures with neck control, it's a big opportunity for me because the aneurysm will collapse. Okay, there is no thrombus in this aneurysm, so this aneurysm is going to collapse, and it is a big opportunity for me. Maybe less than one minute, I can clip it. So if it uh, ruptures, uh, I am not very unhappy. I am. I say, okay, very good. We yeah. fast surgery. Okay. So at that time, I closed the I closed the neck and I put a distal. That is why I clip I dissected this aneurysm distally. So I put a distal clip. I have a proximal clip. Less than one minute, I just hold the aneurysm like that with uh, some bayonet or something, and I clip it. Off. Okay. Okay. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
it's finished. Okay. okay. So yeah. and, uh, it's a simple case. It's, uh, not very complicated. Only thing is you need to have patience for this. And uh, all these cases, most of these cases kill you because lack of patience. You, you don't complete one step. And then it kills you. Okay, this is uh, what you have to understand. If you have patience more than the aneurysm, if you have more patience than the aneurysm, you can finish any aneurysm. You just have to sit down, drill, 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 cut, 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 drill, 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 expose everything. And finally, the aneurysm will be helpless. It will be on its knees and then you just clip it. Okay, is all. But I understand your point. Yes, it is a very, very valid point. If you, you should do BTO. If you are not sure, supposing if it is even going into the cavernous segment, and uh, sometimes there you find these huge aneurysms going everywhere, and you don't know. You really don't know whether you will be able to clip. So in this case, sometimes you even ask your uh, interventionist guy, okay, can you do a... I never ask him to clip my aneurysm. I ask him to put a balloon and... Uh, uh, see if the patient, if with normal BP, is he okay? You lower the BP a bit. If his cross circulation is going to be okay, in this case, I'll be more than happy to just uh, trap the aneurysm and leave it. If it is not, then I will do a high flow bypass. I mean, uh, radial atrium. Very good. If I, I can. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ipa, and, and, and enjoy your, your day. And thanks for taking the time out of your busy schedule for an excellent presentation. Uh, and everyone else, hang around, but we're going to end it formally. Thanks, Ipe. Thanks, Ipe. Thank you so Thanks, much. Ipe. Thanks, Ipe. See you guys.